right, I think we're recording now. Uh, Doc, I don't know, are you in your zero gravity machine or is this a Zoom issue? At, you, you look upside down to me. I don't know if you're seeing oh, it. Pardon me. No, I was, uh, I was just giving a lecture on the difference between stalagmites and stalactites and I was oh. just uh, using a real world example there. Okay, no, we're back up. We're back up. Okay. All right. That, yeah, that's better. Okay. All right, hello YouTube, Derek Shoehorn here for Life Advice. I'm joined as usual this week by Dr. Pam Landsman. Great to have you with us again, Pam. Um, I've got a question from a viewer which came via me, but is actually addressed to Dr. Pam. So uh, I figured we'd just start with that this week and uh, see where it takes us. Okay, go right ahead, Derek. You've got my full support. Okay, here comes the question. Dear Dr. Pam, I'm writing to you courtesy of Derek because despite spending over 5,000 euros on scuba gear, I was unable to locate your pyramidoid lake bed complex. Your elusivity is admirable. I urgently need your help with an issue that if unresolved could lead to terminal social embarrassment. I mean, I would literally kill myself if I got this wrong. The government COVID regulations are due to relax soon to allow mixing of six household names. I am famous, but how can I choose five other household names to include in my bubble? I don't want anyone to feel left out. I await your advice with the avidness of an F1 driver on the starting grid. Yours, the late Murray Walker. Before I hand over to you, Doc, for your response to that, just a couple of thoughts of my own here. I think this whole thing about who to choose, it's kind of like that old question about who would you choose to have at your dinner party. I think this is a very individual thing. It's going to vary from person to person, but nonetheless, I'm sure whatever the doc's got to say on this will be helpful. Everyone the doc knows is a household name, including myself. And the other thing I was going to mention about this is I think you might've made a little bit of a mistake. Maybe you've misread the guidelines from the government a little bit there. Because I think what they refer to in their guidelines is six households that can mix, not six household names. And although we are going to answer your question, Murray, about the household names, just a word on mixing with other households here. Uh, don't do it, is my advice. Don't mix with our ha other households. And I would have said the same thing even before COVID. Okay, so with all that being said, what do you got to say to Mr. Walker, Doc, on this question of which household names he should choose to mix with? Okay, first off, I just want to mention uh, Murray's phrase, uh, I don't want anyone to feel left out. Um, uh, first things first, Murray, you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, anyone that uh, is excluded from your own personal uh, bubble of six household names uh, will be a part of the, the biggest, friendliest group in the world, and they are called ordinary people. Doc, can you hear me? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the problem is here. The doc seems to have been plunged into a very dark and blue place. Doc? All right, and we're back. A few technical problems last night, so we're picking this up the next day. Uh, I think, Doc, you were visited by some aliens. Am I correct? Is that what went on there? Okay, uh, no, not aliens on this occasion. It was uh, the guys over at the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, they needed a bit of extra juice, and so I said it was okay for them to plug in next door. Um, I just forgot to tell them I was on a Zoom call, so um, oh, I see. they're going to be getting a strongly worded email from me tomorrow. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I think, if I remember rightly, you were just getting rolling with your answer for Mr. Murray Walker's question about which five household names to meet up with. So maybe you'd like to just pick up where you left off there. Of course, yeah. Sorry for the breaking communication, listeners. There are half dozen people you want to team up with. There have to be people that you learn from, the, the, the most, most important people uh, in the world, people with, with skills that you do not have, but you can look to to develop yourself physically. Uh, obviously, if I was available, I would be the best person to be in your team and to a much lesser extent, Derek. Really, in general, I would say uh, as a point of advice for, for any subscribers, you don't really need to spend too much time worrying about 
the bottom 95% of humanity. Um, they're not really going to um, affect your life in any major way. And it'll be better if you just focus on uh, on the great and the good. So that's me to a much, much lesser extent, Derek. But the challenge of picking just, uh, just half a dozen uh, individuals from one lifetime is, uh, I, I understand, is incredibly uh, tricky for uh, for civilians. I mean, the the number of uh, associations I've made uh, in this lifetime alone is is uh, is vertiginous. But when you when you thread together all, all of the lifetimes that I've experienced, it 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 really is a, an intimidating roll call of uh, household names. Yeah, I'm not sure you've actually mentioned your previous lives on the channel before, Doc. Maybe you'd like to expand on that a little bit for the folks. Sure thing. I've been practicing reincarnation now for uh, several years. Um, it's just a helpful way to get my message out there and not be confined by the traditional um, uh, lifespan of uh, my corporeal form. Uh, I remember the first time it happened quite by accident. Uh, I'd reached uh, the end of, uh, of my natural time or, or rather my, uh, my physical carapace had. The very next thing I remember, I woke up in bed with my mother. Uh, I was cold, a, a, a little bit confused, very wet. Um, it took me a couple of moments to get my bearings and then I, I, I realized uh, what had befallen me. Um, I remember looking up at my father. That's my first uh, first memory and I saw that he looked anxious and bewildered and in need of guidance. So I took him to one side and he actually became my first student. I advised him on the most elegant way to cut the cap on the cigar to celebrate my birth and things got rolling from there. Fantastic stuff. And you're still disseminating the cigars to this day, I understand. That's it. It's a valued rev revenue stream. My first student was my father, but um, I uh, steadily got into um, tutoring uh, greater and greater numbers, uh, which actually culminated in me setting up the Swiss Army. And I was able to drill them into the most ferocious and fearsome fighting force that the world has ever seen. By the way, just to clear something up before we get uh, any emails in, um, no, the Swiss Army does not solely use a Swiss Army knife to protect themselves. It's a useful tool, although I personally favor a Leatherman. Actually, it's a, a popular misconception that uh, the Swiss Army knife is, uh, is the only thing in our arsenal. We, we, uh, we have a, a wide range of uh, weapons to utilize. Can you think of a, a war or skirmish uh, that the... Swiss Army has ever participated in, you'll struggle. And the reason for that is we stop them before we start. Um, often just with a raised eyebrow, uh, the enemy uh, usually just drop their weapons and, uh, and retreat at full pace. Yeah, well, I think it just goes to show how highly skilled in the art of war the Swiss are. And if anyone has ever met a Swiss person in the flesh, you will know just how intimidating they are, even the kids. Knee trembling. As I say, reincarnation has just been a helpful aid, uh, which has enabled me to spread my message far and wide uh, over the years. Um, uh, although one word of advice for anyone else um, experimenting with reincarnation, there will be some periods of human history in which humanity is, is almost in, in the doldrums. There's not too much going on. I remember <laughs> during the dark ages, I got a lot of reading done. And to, uh, to combat that, uh, recently I've actually set up a, a reincarnation station which helps me to uh, hurry along uh, the reiteration process. It's uh, set up here, here in Switzerland, and uh, I use the reincarnation station uh, any, any time. I, I kind of want to hit uh, fast, fast forward on a reanimation period. Um, we also turn it into a revenue stream. It's also known as Dignitas, and uh, members of the general public uh, can come and, uh, and attempt reincarnation there um, uh, between 9 to 5, uh, Monday to Saturday. Yeah, I've, I've known several people to use that service now. And uh, although I wouldn't say they, were, they seemed happy to be going there, uh, it certainly does sound as though it's effective. I'm proud to announce a 100% efficacy rating uh, to date. But coming back to Mario's question, it's fantastic to hear from him again. Uh, we've had some great laughs over the year in Formula One. Uh, any eagle-eyed viewers of Formula One will recognize me as the driver of the safety car. Um, I've been there for, uh, for some time now, although um, I, uh, I've gone part-time. They, they also use a virtual safety car now. But it is great, Doc, to remember those times when you were the uh, full-time safety car driver, because as I remember, you had a 100% record of never having been overtaken. I was undefeated in the safety car for uh, 15 seasons, and that's a record that still stands. Fantastic stuff. Well, this is all very interesting, Doc, uh, but we're getting a little short on time, and it occurs to me that we haven't really hit the crux of Mr. Murray Walker's question yet, which was about which five household names he should mix with. So do you have an answer for that? Oh, uh, Houdini, Cleopatra, Mr. Muscle, and my parents. All right, so with all that being said, keep growing. No cheat days. See you in the next video.